What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. Uh, I missed the last one, but you know the crew held it down. It was an amazing episode, so I hope y'all check that out. If you haven't checked it out, go listen to it. How to get your event space, man. It's just so many ways to get it, and the Melanin Money Show is bringing you every last way for you to get this melanin money. So Jacqueline Carter, how y'all feeling, man? Hey, what'd you say? Give money always in, in all, all ways. ways. Okay, <laughs> all right. I, I did say that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my yeah. gosh, he's already on his yay shit and we haven't even started yet. I'm already <laughs> on my yay shit and we haven't even started. Don't ever play yourself. Literally. Don't ever play yourself. But hey, I'm oh, feeling yeah. good. Good, yeah, high energy. Jacqueline. Yeah, I feel the energy. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jacqueline. I was uh, giving her kudos off off the record. So uh, she uh, won, was the MVP uh, of a celebrity versus entrepreneurs, right? Uh, Basketball game. It was athletes versus entrepreneurs. Athletes versus entrepreneurs. The only thing that I could say is that, you know, the athletes work for the entrepreneurs. So that's why we won, you know, because at the end of the day, (laughs) entrepreneurs always win. Like, I was like, I know that's harsh, but that's the reality of it. Entrepreneurs always win. Think about it. Shaq winning, right? Kobe winning. LeBron winning. They're all entrepreneurs at the end. And all their money is made more off the court than on the court. Off the court. In fact, remember we did a podcast on that. We we did the literally did the math on like how much more money he made in that one deal than he did in his entire career. So Kobe. Exactly. Uh, And today we're talking about yay. Yay wouldn't be yay, like if he hadn't built all of these other things outside of music, right? That's a fact. That's a fact. What a a transition. And before we get started, y'all, shout out to Melon and Money, shop that melon and money. If y'all haven't seen the new drip, let me tell y'all something. Clean up on aisle six, too much drip. I got the jacket on right now. Y'all been asking me personally about it for a minute, man. Now y'all can go to shop that melon and money. Y'all can get the jumpsuits, the the tracksuits, the the bomber. It's 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 so much drip that I'm telling y'all, just go there, check it out. Yeah, we just be ready to you know rock this drip out uh, this season. You know what I thought about y'all? I thought we we should like do like a. A design competition like you know what I'm saying? y'all rocking with melon and money y'all got a creative eye like y'all really about this like merch life because truth be told right i know my limitations right i'm grateful that do you y'all... do you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, shit. What, what are limitations right. Are limitations? <laughs> right so i'll put it like this i have a lot of ideas in my head right but like as a as a designer when it comes to merchandise you know i, I think there's people who specifically focus on that whereas everything y'all seen so far is kind of like inspiration like hey it's typography it's fly but like we want to get drippy you know we want to get super so if you like got a creative eye maybe we'll do like a some type of competition where like you know a design off or something and if your design wins like we'll figure it out we're just doing this in real time but like if you are about this merch life and you know how to design clothes or know are you great at graphic design send us an email at podcast at melanamoney.com because we want to see what you got you know what i'm saying we want to put that in the store we want to get lit but um but yeah man hey that's 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 just off the top of his dome, y'all. We did not plan that, but I actually really like that idea. And you know what's funny? Talking about Ye, I didn't realize until I watched that documentary how close to Virgil he was. Like I didn't, yeah. I just didn't know that, you know. And I went to, um, you know, his whole, uh, you know, R.I.P. to Virgil's when he had it here in Atlanta at the High Museum. He had his exhibit. Like I went and saw it, and I just. I didn't realize, right? So watching the documentary was really cool. It was really eye-opening for me personally. So yeah, I loved the was. design aspect of it. And it was like, it. I was like, oh, okay. Now I get why he does what he does, how he, uh, it makes sense. I love it. I love it. Document the process. <laughs> let's get it, y'all. Let's Gotta get look, it. document the process. So let's get into it, y'all. So before we get into it, as a matter of fact, Jacqueline, I had to put you on the spot because I know normally you have this really smooth like transition to figure like to it to shout out a review on the show we just gonna start the show off that way right so i know you and i'm sorry i might have stole your thunder i might have like interrupted how you wanted to slide it in this episode but i just want to start the show off with some good energy so can you go into your archives real quick not archives because we get them every week but like let us know the latest and greatest review uh on the melanin money show so we can you know get inspired to deliver some fire today this space this space on zoom doesn't inspire you well uh okay touche touche i'm talking about carter <laughs> <laughs> stop it <laughs> um, uh, 
no so we always have some really great reviews um we i really honestly love hearing from you guys like we have over 65 well over 60 reviews most of them being five star we appreciate y'all this is really how honestly i keep up with like are we reaching people okay oh, so oh, sorry. Hold, on, hold on i'm sorry breaking news breaking news amazon announces a 20 to 1 stock split amazon what right now Amazon announces a 20 to 1 stock split. And was, is that our first breaking? Well, we don't drop. Well, it's going to drop next week, but it's yeah. breaking for us. <laughs> Amazon drop, announces a 20 to 1 stock. Yo, that's crazy. We've been I've waiting never, on this I've forever. I've stock split that big in my lifetime. We've been waiting on this forever. Like you're 60. We have. And it's kind of crazy. And like, I, I don't think people understand what exactly a stock split is and what it does. Can I certify a financial planner before she gives the review? Just like give a little bit of like quick, quick game on what a stock split is. Okay. So look, guys, a stock split essentially is, <laughs> what you laughing at? essentially is when a company decides that they want to reduce the price of their share, right? So they want to split up their stock. So a 20 for one. So for every one share of Amazon stock that you have, which Amazon was trading around $3,000 for every one share, they're going to split it 20 times. So what's the math on that? I'm Mr. Trying to look investment at stock. advisor. I'm trying to look at their you stock. You're the math on that. Okay, cool. No uh, worries. So it's about 150. Is it, is it trading at 3,000? It's 150. It's 150 if it's 3,000. I'm looking at that. Yeah. yeah. So if, if it's 150, it's 3,000. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it's, so it's going to be about $150 a share. Their, their stock price is up 3% just off that announcement. Just off that announcement. And you know who's holding a lot of <laughs> yeah. um, I, I benefited off that Tesla when Tesla did that too. Yeah, um, they, yeah. Basically for the consumer, they think Amazon is so expensive. And now it's going from $3,000 a share to one fifty a share. The price didn't change. The value didn't change. But now more people can afford it. Right. More people will then buy uh -huh. it. Price. So here's another, so here's a, here's like a, a stupid way to explain it, right? Because Jacqueline's like smarter than all of us on the podcast. Yeah. And that was a great explanation. But here's an even, even simpler way, right? Imagine you have a pizza, right? It's a, it's a whole pizza and you it's all yours, Right. And then someone comes in and slices it 20 ways. Is this does the size of the pizza change? No, there's just more slices of it. Right. So that's what happens in the 21 stocks, but you still own the same amount. It's that same one pizza. You just get more, more pieces of it. Right. So shout out to Amazon. Right. Jeff is not even the CEO anymore, but shout out to Jeff, man, for all that you've done over the past 20 years of making it the most monstrous uh, e-commerce company ever known to man. But I think the big the big point is really what Carter was saying is like now investors think it makes investors think, oh, this is more affordable. Right. Which back in the day when they started doing this, it really was right, because you used to have to buy a whole share. You used to have to mm -hmm. buy a whole share of Amazon. You couldn't uh, buy fractional shares, which you can buy fractional shares now. Explain that. You can't skip over that. What's fractional shares? Fractional shares, meaning that you can buy a portion of a share. So. When Amazon, or as it is right now, Amazon trades at about $3,000 a share, you used to, back in the day, back in shoulda, woulda, could you had to buy a whole share. The way you had to spend $3,000, right? You couldn't buy part of a share. Now you can invest using different tools and just different platforms to be able to buy you know, $50 worth of Amazon, right? That means yeah. you're buying a fractional share. Right. And so the idea with that was, okay, if we do a stock split and we make our stock appear to be cheaper, then more people will want to buy it. And yeah. it's all about <laughs> supply and demand. I'm going yeah. to have to post, there was this really good interview that Bezos did where he was like explaining how the stock is not the company because he was like mm -hmm. at our strongest point, he was like, when we had the strongest balance sheet, when we were profitable, our company stock was tanking based on investors' perception of the company. And he was like, mm -hmm. our company was the strongest it had ever been. And this literally <laughs> him in an interview. And I'm like, that's a really great point, Bezos. So I know you know what you're doing with this 20 for one split. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a Kanye it's move. It's a power move. It's a power no, because you know he's still influencing it, even, no, even if he's not the CEO. But anyway, so yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I have the, but anyways. I have the I have the review. Can there you go. Out? That's what I we're going. Yeah. Okay. okay. This, it is not selfish, but I found it. Um, absolutely, absolutely love this show and you all as individuals. Um, I have been promoting the crap out of this podcast to every Black king and queen I meet. Y'all stay dropping gems that feel almost illegal to know. 
Ooh. Thank you all so much for sharing your knowledge and helping the Black community grow. I bought Carter's B-Day course and have literally learned more in that course than I have in my entire life, my entire time in college, building an empire for my son soon. And Aww. I found that I didn't see my name into it. So I hit the more button. So that wasn't selfish. But you I was, know, I was, I was going to say, I was like, sounds like a little bit of a bias selection. No, right? no, I, 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 the, 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 my name wasn't until I hit the more part. But anyway, we give a no. game so good. It feels almost illegal. Feels to almost know. illegal to know. You know hey, what? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling inspired. Look, listen, listen. I'm, and we got to make sure y'all clip this up. This, this needs to be an additional fourth clip. This ain't even yeah. the third. Like, you know, how we do three. This is a fourth clip. I'm giving away a bomber jacket. We're giving away a bomber jacket. Here's all you gotta do. It's the most expensive item in the store. Here's the only thing you gotta do. You have to make sure that you're subscribed to the show. Make sure that you've left a five-star review. Make sure that you're following us and make sure that you've shared it in your stories and tag me in the money. That's, now that seems like a lot, but it's not really that much. Cause if you're listening to this, you probably already are subscribed. So you probably already checked one box, right? All you gotta do is leave a review Make sure that you're following us, but you're probably already following, and then tag us in your stories. We're going to pick a lucky winner, and we're going to send a bomber jacket to you. That's like right? a $200 jacket, eh? Yes. But I'm feeling this shipping. And, um, and hopefully, uh, is, is there a caveat? Got to live stateside? No caveat. We'll figure it out. Ooh, if you're in Australia, you can get this jacket. No caveat. We'll eat it, right? Because in the, we, we want to spread this word, right? Like, in the next 20... Um, Kanye shit. Right in the next 24 months, you know how people be in their buy. I told I text the team this yeah. as seen in yeah, it business insider, black uh -huh. enterprise. I guarantee you there's gonna be at least 10 people, at least 10, right? Within the next 24 months, because of the their media feature on the Melanin Money show, as seen in huh, Melanin Money. Don't ever play yourself. So look, uh, we want to spread it. this message as far and as wide as possible, and we're gonna literally bribe you to do it. But however, here's the, here's the catch to Jacqueline's point. The catch is don't do it if you don't believe in what we're talking about. If you just want to win the jacket because you're because you don't want to spend the money, please do not enter this comp this competition. But if you love our content and you believe that it should be shared at scale and everybody needs to know about it, like the person who left that review, tap in. Let's get it. Let's go. All right. Enough enough of that. Let's 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 get into the show. Um. So Carter gave us the review. Jacqueline gave us a spiel on what a stock split is. So now we're gonna get into. Uh, today's topic. And today we're going to talk about the Kanye documentary. I think the last episode of the trilogy aired last week. So we wanted to make sure we had a little bit, a little bit of time to let it breathe. Right. So we got the trilogy yeah. though. It was just a, it was, it was just season one, the limited series. They called it, it's literally in the title. It's called a it's trilogy. Like, it's called, it's the same, Netflix calls it a trilogy. They, they, paid, a trilogy. they call it 30, they paid 30 million. Wait, so wait but is it a trilogy because it's three, like three seasons? Three episodes. I mean, say, here's what I learned about TV. They'll say seasons just to leave the door open if it gets like enough traction, like we got to figure something out, we got to do it again. But they're probably not going to do anything else with this, right? But they want to, they always want to leave the door open just in case like people are like, yo, can y'all please do something again? Right. Um, but yeah, they call it a trilogy. So, but anyway, so we wanted to um, break it down. I mean, everybody's been talking about it. It's super inspiring. So we want to talk about a few things we learned. I got five. I think it might end up being six, but um, things that we learned from the genius 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 documentary uh -huh. yeah so before we get into it just like initial thoughts Jacqueline like when you saw it saw three episodes like just how did you feel after just like watching the documentary I felt um a little defeated on the Kimye part but uh overall <laughs> overall I felt inspired like it was honestly a reminder of documenting my own process Right. Like I wasn't always on social media. I was more focused on building my wealth. Right. Like I wasn't focused on social media or using it as a tool. And I so once I watched that, I was like, dang, like he really documented like all of that stuff. Like there's been a lot of events and places that I've been where like like, for example, Ludacris gave me my first and only <laughs> ever cigar. Right. And he taught me how to like what to smoke, how to smoke it, you know, like the whole cigar etiquette, right? Had I had somebody documenting my life, that would have been <laughs> in my documentary. There's that, because, right? There's that. Yeah. <laughs> nobody yeah. was documenting my life. We yeah. missed out on that, right? So it was kind of a reminder of like, I mean, I do 
do some pretty dope stuff, but I just don't document it and I don't share it. And it kind of sucks because at the end of the day, I'm like, well, then it's just a story. Like if you don't document it, then it's just a, he said, she said, and we know how people like to do Kanye. Yeah. 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 Like we got to see it. People got to see it to believe it. So it's a reminder of like, you actually are a dope person, Jacqueline. Like you need to document your story, document your journey. So when I played in that celebrity basketball game, I did have a content guy there. He was taking some content just of me and he got some cool shots. He didn't get all the shots, but he got some cool ones. So I appreciate that. (laughs) But to to caveat that though, I think, I mean, we are in an age where I posted about this a while back, decentralized media, right? It's like everybody, you know, has the ability to create their own media platform. But at the same token, I still think it doesn't detract from the fact that there's a certain like a uh, level of nostalgia from just being able to tell that story. Like it almost like forces people to connect to the previous generation. You know, like there's some value sitting down with grandma and learning about you know, that history, you know, and that's just as valuable. So for example, I was watching a podcast the other day and they were debating about this guy was saying he wanted to walk a hundred miles for a tender day or something like that. Something silly. But the more the story was, he was saying that he wanted to do it for him, but he also felt like it was really good content. And then, but the guy was who was on the show was telling him, he was like, hey, look, whether you document it or not, if you did a content talking about what I learned from my 100 mile Tinder date, it's still valuable, right? So it's like, even if you don't get to document every moment in real time, at least maybe take that time to, to uh, decompress and unpack, right? Your experience and what you learn from it. And oftentimes that will also be valuable. Of course, there's nothing like, you know, be feeling like you're right in the room. Like I think seeing some of those moments that we'll get into with like Ye and Pharrell and like like just seeing all the people he was connected to during that era was dope. But also if you don't get a chance to capture all of that, never forget that you can still on the back end tell that story, right? And I think the more credible your brand is, people are still going to find a lot of value in that. I think like Drink Champs is a great example. I'm not sure if y'all listen to that podcast. where We don't get to see all those stories, but it's dope to hear them like 20 years later talk about stuff that like we like damn like I was alive during that era so you know however you can document it just make sure you remember it if you got a bad memory then try to document it in some way so all hope is not lost if you don't document everything mm, I appreciate that so yeah. so Carter what did you see I mean just insp- inspiration it's probably the most inspiring I've been in in, in the last couple of years just because um I, I how much he believes in himself is to, did, did not make any sense to me Right. Like like how much he believed in himself was so insane. And that's why he's a genius. Right. And I think that it's a reminder. The biggest reminder to me was that it doesn't matter what anybody else says. You have to believe in you more than anybody else if you want to be anybody. successful. And yeah. And that's that, that's my takeaway. Dope. Dope. Well, let's just get into it, man. Um, we got a few points, some of which we just at a high level kind of just touched on a little bit. But we want to dig into them a little bit further. Because as, you know, we build out this Melanin Money brand and there's things that we talk about offline that, you know, we probably should just, you know, you know, uh, share with y'all here and there just because it's going to be dope to be able to go back because this is recorded, right? This is going to live wherever it lives ultimately and be able to go back and reference like, yo, they really said they was going to do a show like the Lifestyle of Rich and Famous, but just for Melanin Millionaires. And they did that shit, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like, it's just important to document, but the first point is, you know, document the journey like we've talked about, but build a life worth documenting. So what I always say is the gift of the Internet is that anybody can have a platform. The curse of the Internet is that anybody can have a platform. Right. And so everybody sees the documentary and they're like, man, I need a cootie. Everybody's like, where my cootie at? You know what I'm saying? Where my cootie at? Yay attracted cootie. Right. Yay was being yay. Didn't even realize probably to the level of what he was at at that point. But somebody else saw something in him was like, I need to tap tap in with him. Cootie technically at that time, in terms of just like media and content, he was already out there. You know what I mean? He he was a comedian. He had a lot going on. He kind of put his life or his career on pause because of what he saw in Yay. So, yes, document the journey underscore create a life worth documenting. And the same thing happened with Gary V, right? Like, you know, he had this, he was living his life and the kid came up to him was like, hey, like, I want to be your videographer for free. And then now he blew Gary up, you know what I'm saying? So I think 
if you step into your greatness and step into your purpose, you will ultimately live a life worth documenting, right? And then mm-hmm. now you just have to find that person that's going to, you know, actually do the documenting and then share it to the world because there's nothing more important than, you know, letting people be a part of your journey, right? That's how they, that's how they get connected with, that's how they fall in love. That's how they become a raging right. fan, right? right? When they're connected to your journey. So I just think it's very important to live that life and then find somebody to document it for you. Thanks. No, I I think that's a really good point. I live in this world where it was a certain point that I decided I was like, I don't want to live a life that's not worth documenting. And I didn't say it in that term, but I just was like, okay, staying at the house all day, working in the office, like that's not the life that I'm destined for. Mm. So, you know, I took, and I don't know if y'all really saw this, but I took, I think, seven 48 hour trips in the course of like four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just dipped off, caught a flight, was out. You know, I'd be there for about 48 hours, enough time to do whatever I want to do and then dip out. Right. Like, I think there was a couple of cases where I stayed maybe for an extra day or so. But for the most part, like I just took a bunch of 48 hour trips. You know, I wasn't really documenting that. That actually was for like my own like healing and kind of like stuff that I'm going through. But Mm -hmm. I wanted I was like, yo, I should be living like a life that I want to live. And if I want to dip off, I should be able to dip off like and if I can document that, all the better. Yeah, live your best, live, live your best life. Like, if you live in your best life, trust me, it's gonna be worth documenting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's and, that, and that's what it boils down to. Is right? just like live, like live your best life. You know what I'm saying? And just enjoy it. And I think there has to be a certain level of intentionality too. It's like sometimes, like it's almost like a, a, a hack, right? So like when you people might think. When, when I drop stuff over this podcast, I'm like, yo, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. It's like, no, I'm a person of integrity. So it's like, I don't want to be caught with my pants down by saying we, we were going to do X, Y, and Z. And somebody like, yo, remember y'all episode 24? Y'all was like, y'all was going to do this event. And like, you know what I'm saying? So like, literally, it's a forced way to accountability. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's the other thing. It's just like, when you document, you tell people, you bring people along the journey, it gives you a chance to force yourself into accountability. So like, that's another way you should document. Like if you having trouble or not necessarily having trouble, if you're trying to find a way to hold yourself accountable, announce something publicly, yo, I'm dropping this, or I plan to do this. There's people who you don't even realize are watching you like literally today. So I posted my little boxing clip um, from my go boxing twice a week. And someone reached out to me today, literally as this recording. And she was like, you know, you're, you inspire me because, you know, I just had foot surgery and like, I've, you know, I can't really walk around right now and blah, blah. And all these things she was sharing with me, but she was inspired because she knows the journey that I shared about my health journey, right. And having a spinal surgery and all that kind of stuff. And so you just never know who's watching, but if you don't document and you don't share, you don't give people a chance to watch. So that's the key. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure you're documenting and make sure that you're kind of creating a declaration for like who you are becoming. Cause like I was saying off, off, off the record on the podcast is like, if you're wrong, people ain't going to remember anyway. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but if you write, it's like, yo, he said he was going to do, she said she was going to do X, Y, and Z. So just say you're going to do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, guys, that's, that's my take on that. Um, but let's move on to the next point. Having people around you that are willing to be a part of your dream. Right. Having people around you that are willing to be a part. Of, I think I added this. If y'all looking for this, and y'all like, where is it at? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I added it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That are willing to be a part of your dream. This documentary got released 20 years later. Crazy. Right? 20 years later, this guy was like, yo, you know, I see Kanye. I see what he got going on. I'm going to document the journey. And, you know, he got him and his business partner got 30 million for the footage from Netflix. Right. So would you, you know, tuck away 20 years of your life to document somebody else's journey? And on the back end, you basically, you know, average one point five million dollars a year. Right. To, to, okay. to do that. On the so back I'm hearing end. I'm hearing you say get off of social media, Jack, and like keep keep all of that info private. Uh, <laughs> now you can do both. You can do some, you do some for some for social. And then some behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? You but, always, have, always have more than you show, you know what I'm saying? Give, yeah. give them a little, it's like, it's like a Costco, right? You know, you give them a little taste, give them a little sample, but it's, you know, so if you want the whole thing, you got to buy, you know what I'm saying? You got to go to the freezer section and buy the, uh, the pizza bites, you know what I mean? But I think it's important because <clears throat> then you can't have a, a group of friends that 
one, they'll support you, but two, everybody wants to be number one, right? Like if, if everybody around you wants to be in the spotlight, right. wants to be, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Like some people just have to support you. And I think that if you're if your vision is big enough, right? If your drive is strong enough, it's gonna be people around you that say, I know if I just stay close enough to this man, or stay close mm-hmm. enough to this woman. I'm going places too, not from a leeching standpoint, but from right. let me support him because I don't have a vision yet, but I know that person does. And, 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 and if, if I can find a way to expedite or improve his vision, I'll grow as well. So it's similar like, you know, George, you had this melon and money stuff in your head years ago. I'm talking about 2013, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And so when you told it to me, I'm like, bro, I got to be a part of it, right? So... I think having people around you is willing to support your dreams and really support you where you want to go is so important. And some people are so big headed, they only, you know, they don't want to support you or they get jealous. So I think having that group around you is important. Major key, major key. Yeah. I think you kind of got to find that fine line there, yeah. you know, yeah. read yeah. your friends, see who's, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate, of course, sure. like, cause then you start to wonder like, okay, is this person around me? Cause they really rock with me or are they around mm-hmm. me? Cause they really trying to get something from me. Yeah. Like, and I think we talked about that like a few episodes ago of like doing business with friends and family. Yeah. Y'all should, yeah. so, should check that episode out. Cause we go way more in depth than in that. And like the, the circles of like friends and like how to categorize people. Did that work for y'all at all? I hope so. Cause we give me y'all homework. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We might be the most tactical podcast like out there. Like, <laughs> like we never leave without giving y'all like yeah. X's and O's. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not all philosophical. And again, you gotta make sure that people are willing to improve your dream, not just like hang, hang on. Like Cootie's like, yo, I'm filming you every day. Like if you're about to go to the dentist, no, you know he asked him in the shower, like, bro, I'm about to go to the dentist. You can stay. He's like, no. Nah. If he didn't come with him to the dentist, they would have never had the footage but through from the him wire. his things taken off or through the wire. So he asked, like, bro, you want to come? He said, I'm, I'm going to be right back. He said, hop in the shower. I'm coming. Like, you know, so that's the type of dedication you need to run. Yeah, I almost forgot about that clip. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Cool. And, 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 like, it goes to another point. is like not caring about what other people think about that. Because, again, if, if somebody's not you and they're not documenting their journey, they don't know where they're going, and they see you, like, walking in places and you got a cameraman behind you, even if it's just the iPhone, yeah. To the average Joe, them like, what's the got going? Like, what is he yeah. got going on? What does she got going on? But you can't even worry about that, right? Like Cootie, yeah. he never cared what they were at. They was in the 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 Rockefeller offices, you know, what yeah. I'm saying recording. They was in the dentist office recording, like yeah. everywhere, you know. So you gotta have somebody who's willing to go that extra mile. I mean, even think that you know when we was in, you know, we was in L.A. for uh, the, the the giveaway campaign. The videographer that was out there. Like, you know, they was telling them, turn the light off. Like, you know, we was in a restaurant, but it's like, we got to get this footage, my guy. You know? <laughs> so it's like, and so this is a great content. Yeah, you can't worry about what people think. You know what I mean? For sure. All right. So let's move on to the next point. Don't let people put you in a box. This is probably like the biggest takeaway for me. So we all know Ye, the great producer. Well, you know, at one point, right? We knew Ye as this great producer, right? You know, I first heard about Ye from the Blueprint. Right. I'm like, yo, this track is fire. Who like who produced this? Right. Um, but Ye knew Ye before everybody else knew Ye. And Ye knew he was a rapper. Like, right. Ye, Ye knew you're not about to put me in his producer only box. Right. And so I feel like a lot of like that chip on his shoulder and that energy that he carries is because it's like people were te- like basically treating him like sunning him. Like, yo, where my beat set? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm nicer than you. What do you mean? Where my beat set? Are you kidding? Don't ever play yourself. And so like. Um, I think that like, if he allowed people to put him in that box, you got to figure like, he's, you know, at the height of Rockefeller, he's with Jay and them, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you don't like question that you just play your role. You just have, most people are just happy to be in the room. Not yay. Yeah. He's like, I'm a rapper. Okay. Y'all don't want to open up the budget. I'll do my own video. I'll sneak in the uh, MTV studios. I'll put up 33 racks to put my video together. And Dane walked in and he still didn't change his tune. Like, yeah, hey, um, I thought he was going to change his tune. And Dane walked in. No, he said, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you know, they didn't want to open up the budget, but we here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He basically forced his hand. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Look, y'all don't want to, y'all, and it's going to go right, right into our next point, but it's like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm not letting y'all put me in a box. 
I believe that I'm one of the next great rappers, right? And we all know how successful College Dropout was. Phenomenal, phenomenal album, right? And so don't ever let people put you in a box. I mean, of course, he ventured on to do fashion, which is really the thing that got him to billionaire status, right? Um, he did a partnership with The Gap. Uh, their stock went crazy when, when the partnership announced. So like, don't let people put you in a box. Like, it might look strange to them. It might be like, oh, well, Jacqueline, you're a certified financial planner. Like, why are you doing this? Or Carter, like, you're the tax guy. Why are you now doing this? Like, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Y'all seen a little me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not for you. I love this, this quote that my buddy Curtis Wall says. I love it. It's, um, it's not for them to understand. It's for them to see. Right. They might not understand why you're doing it. They might not understand where you're going with it. But when they see it, they're going to know what's up. Right. And that's all you got to worry about. Don't ever let anybody's opinions or perception or what you used to be define where you are going. Right. Don't let what you used to be define where you are going, because this is a beautiful life and we evolve. And what do I always say? When the facts change, so do I. Me and Jacqueline talk about it all the time. Right. Like, when we think about the financial advisory side of what we do, it's like untouchable. You know what I'm saying? Like people look at us like we got three heads because of, you know, the way that we, we do business or we've done business historically on the financial planning side, right? But they'll try to keep you in a box. Like, well, financial advisors do it this way and this is how we do it. And then when we transition to more of the educational side and the content and that kind of thing, that's a completely different ball game. And so to that side of the industry, it's like they can't fathom it. They can't wrap their head around it. Now they're starting to, and they want to now learn from us. But at one point, it's like, well, what are y'all doing? You know, that's strange. That's not how we do things. We, we wear suits and we are in the offices with the mahogany desks. Like, we don't do that. That's the educators. Yeah, We're, we're advisors. We have credentials. And so you, you can't be afraid to break the mold and do something non-traditional if you know that's what you were called to do. Facts. Jack, can you expand on that? Miss fin Miss Financial Planner, aka everything else. I mean, y'all know where I come from. I think that the most important promises that you make in life are the promises you make to yourself, right? So if you promise to yourself, like, hey, I'm not going to be held in a box, like I know what I'm capable of, then I think that you have to go up after that and you have to keep that promise to yourself. Yeah. I think that when you know what you're capable of. Right. When you start to see like, oh, wow, like this is an opportunity for me. Like mm -hmm. on our last episode, we we interviewed Brian, who has a seven figure event space business. And he talked about I asked him, I was like, so like, why do you go by billionaire B? And he's like, because I know I'm going to be a billionaire. I have mm -hmm. to sneak that into existence. I can't let anybody hold me in a box. Right. So I think that you have to make that promise to yourself. Right. Because he wasn't telling us that to tell us that he's telling us that to tell him that because at the end of the day, it's on him. That work is on right. him. He's got to do that. So I just think you got to make that promise to yourself and never look back. I, I got a, I got a little something for us, a little vulnerable moment for everybody on the podcast. Mm -mm, no, nope, no. Nope, keep that. We're going for it. He's going for it. Come from deep. Go ahead. Um, what what is one thing? that might seem like complete left field to other people, but you, something that you want to get out into the world, like something like when they, when people first see it, like, oh, I didn't know that, like they were into that, or that's something that they would do or be interested in, but it's something that you've been thinking about for a while um, that most people might not even know about. I'll start. And I know people, a lot of people might say this and, and, and they might not be true when you hear it and it's like, okay, I hear you, bro, but I'm actually really good at rapping. <laughs> like I'm actually good, right? And so like for the longest, and Jacqueline knows this because we talked about this on our last podcast. Um, I've wanted to put out like a, a money mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Like, like to let people know, like, number one, I'm getting out this game, but I'm doing it in a way that's like hella creative. And I've been wanting to do that for as long as I can remember. And so that's something that I, I still want to do, something that I have to do. And I'm saying it now so that I truly have to do it. But I would love to put out like a money mixtape with some fire ass bars, you know, because I got them. And I can confidently say it because them shits is fire. Let me you get a couple. Uh, no, so I just, I'm going to hold you accountable to do that yeah. because I just. So I'm going to hold you accountable home. right now. Give me some right now. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm going to let y'all give y'all a little discount joints first and then we'll. we'll <laughs> after that, I got nothing. 
After that, I got nothing, okay? I have an advocate personality, meaning that I advocate for others even more uh, than I advocate for myself. Okay. So I'm here for it. Let me, let's go. I, know, I, I feel it, but I want to know your... Uh, I want to know <laughs> See, I'm not, are you not moving on a spot like this? Oh, um, tomato, so I, tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> go ahead, Carter. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, this really hit home for me because like, being the tax guy is cool, but like, I when I watch the documentary on, on the plane, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I'm really only operating at like thirty percent of my capacity. Like, for that's what I think from a educational yeah. standpoint, right? Yeah, so same. for me, it was a uh, something I want to do more is motivational speaking, you know, inspirational speaking, getting on stages, not just speaking about taxes and money, but like getting people to do whatever is inside of them and let it come out of them, right? So mm -hmm. I, I know I called my videographer and said, like, look, bro, I have to watch a documentary. I said, we're going double down on content. And as soon as tax season is, is over, and y'all can hear me out on this, my content is going to switch from talking about taxes to talking about every single thing that I want to talk about. And mm -hmm. nobody's going to stop me because it's my platform, right? So that's one of the big things for me. And y'all are going to see it unravel in the future. That's, I'm excited to see that because you've been... And, and you owe, I mean, you deserve it, right? Because like you've done, you have went all in on becoming the tax guy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, no one can say that you have been relentlessly focused, especially when I know behind the scenes that you have a lot of other great stuff that's going on that you just opted to not share because you wanted to be relentlessly focused on taxes. So I'm excited to see that holding you accountable and looking forward to uh, what you're going to share. And back to Jacqueline, who's been running I mean, weapons. I'm mm -hmm. actually really excited to see that too and it's funny that you mentioned that and thank you for giving me my answer because <laughs> i've been doing the same thing so i recorded some episodes and like i just haven't dropped them yet but i know it's important for people to see like the other facets of you like yeah you're a financial advisor yeah you're the tax person but you're also a human being at the end of the day so like how did you get to where you were how did you make those decisions like what do you do at these pivotal moments of life like i always felt like vlogging was really for um you know like people who really yeah. call themselves influencers like yeah. people who really no offense but like they really are not good at anything like they don't have one particular craft like uh -huh. they most of them didn't have one way they like they became influencers and so I always thought that that's what that was for and then I realized I was like wait y'all need to hear what I have to say too. Like it wasn't until I posted this post in 2020 and like, it's just kind of taken me a long time to get here. But I think uh, fast isn't always the best way to do it. But I posted in 2020, there was this post that was going around. Um, there was one for black women, for black men and one for black women that was like, hey, I am a black woman. I don't tear other black women down. Did it, do y'all remember that post? Yeah, I do. Yeah. OK, so when I posted it, like I preface mine with like, I am a black woman, but like I'm consistently torn down by like my own people because people like to uh, minimize my story of being black because I am also white. Right. Like mm. That's how I started it. And so I had a lot of people who were also biracial that reached out was like, dang, that's a good way to put it. And I had some of my friends who reached out who were just fully black and were like, dang, I didn't realize I was making you feel like you were less because you are this mixture. Right. And so I was like, hmm, more people need to hear this story. There was way more mixed people following me than I knew. <laughs> and then I just realized I was like, oh, OK, so somebody has to be telling these stories. And so I've already recorded the series of um, like, I don't know who my dad is. Like my dad is allegedly a stripper from Southern California. I have no idea anything about him. Right. Don't know his name, anything. So I've started the process and I decided to document the process. So I had the videos. I just need to post them. And I think it's kind of been like a hesitancy to post them because I'm like, wait, like I talk about entrepreneurship and wealth building and advising and Amazon 20 to one stock splits. Like that's what I talk about. I don't talk mm -hmm. about stripper daddies that we try to find and all of the issues that come along with like not knowing that individual. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's something that should be documented. I think it's something that should be talked about, especially from the standpoint of somebody with my credentials. Okay. I don't no, know if that, that bing bong was intentional. No, or... that, 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 that's, that's, that was honestly horrible time. And that's his phone ringing. So that's one thing I do yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, so I think we all should hold each other accountable to like not let people put us in the box. We all in finance, right? But like, if you want to rap about money, bro, 
go rap about money, bro. So I can I can be in the studio with you, right? If I want to go speak and inspire people who I feel like need to be inspired, do the same thing. If Jacqueline wants to document her journey of everything that she's going through, things that she struggles with, like it's unfair for us to let people hold us in a box and not to step into the fullest version of ourselves. So we hold right. each other accountable on the podcast. Let's get not it. to mention yeah, that the graveyard is the most the wealthiest place on the planet, mm-hmm. right? Because like if you don't get it out of you, where, where does it go, right? It, it dies and you just never know how much, how you can impact someone, how you can inspire someone by something that you're sitting on, right? Your, your, somebody else's destiny is tied to your obedience to showing up in your fullest authentic self, right? Like you have so much inside of you and you're worried about perception or you're worried about, well, this doesn't, I can't, I don't know, I'm going to monetize this or like whatever the reason is, but you are inspired to do it. And if you're inspired to do it, get it out there, right? It doesn't have to be anything super well packaged, just share. You know, it's almost like when you, I feel like intelligence is like, is almost like blocks you from being able to just have the bliss of doing what you want. You ever seen somebody on the internet and it's like, they just, they're just out here, right? They're sharing what they're sharing, they're doing what they're doing. And like part of you, we're being honest, is like, you could probably do it better, but you're not because you care too much. Yeah. They don't give a shit. They just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so that's the advantage that they have. Just Nike had it figured out years ago. Uh-huh. Just do it. Just do it. All right. So as we continue to kind of go through these points real quick, um, believe in yourself at all costs. Be willing to bet on yourself when no one else will. Confidence is king. We kind of already touched on this when we talked about how Kanye, well, how Rockefeller didn't open up the budget for Kanye and he went all in and he figured it out. But like just in general, y'all, like you got to believe in yourself. Don't wait on investors. So melanin money, right? Self-funded. You know what I mean? Like we are, we are investing in this. We didn't wait on venture capital to say, hey, this seems like a good viable opportunity for the culture. Can we um, get behind it? Right? Like you got to bet on yourself at all costs. You got to believe in yourself at all costs, because I feel like um, when you have confidence, I feel like everything in life is a transfer of confidence. When Ye was in the studio and he like, if he would have been like, and you know, this is the greatest, blah, blah, blah. And he was like real timid. They, nobody would have bought, but he was like, he was rapping it like he meant, he knew it was great. You know what I'm saying? Rapping in front of Jay, rapping in front of Pharrell. And that energy was transferable. Like, well, shit, he believes it. I believe it too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it goes. Like, you can get, you can get so far just by being confident. How many of us, by show of virtual hands, have walked up to an establishment, crazy line, right? You and you just walk to the front, right? You know what I'm saying? You act like you're supposed to be there because you're so confident. Nobody stops you. No one says you're not supposed to be there, right? Because of how you're moving. And that's how life works. That's a microcosm of life. If you move through life like you're supposed to be here, you'll get in every room you're supposed to get in. But if you're like, hey, I heard that um maybe kind of sort of you might need somebody in this space. Nigga, yeah, yeah. I mean, sorry, I keep, I'm forgetting. Like, I'm supposed to be like politically correct, but like, <laughs> whatever. Like, no, the door is gonna get closed in your face. But if it's like, hey, um, this meeting's for so and so, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be here. Um, actually, I'm supposed to be leading the meeting, so yeah. people are gonna look. Okay, what's, what's up? You know what I mean? And yeah, so, like, you I've have to walk. You, you have to have that confidence, right? You have to believe in yourself that much. Yeah, man. And like, you know, it's, it's, it's a negotiation quote says the most the most confident person in negotiation often wins, right? Because if you could be saying a lot, if you say it with confidence, you know, sometimes somebody will be like, man, he's so confident. I just gotta <laughs> believe him, right? Like, you know, in a in this reality yeah. situation and like, for those of you all that are struggling with imposter syndrome or whatever, like you need to take whatever time you need to do for you to believe it. Because once yeah. you believe it, once you convince you that you believe it, you convince anybody else, you know, like they say, in sales, the number one sale you gotta make is selling yourself. On yourself. You know what I'm saying? So Kanye West yeah. was sold on himself, <laughs> so much so that he got right. every single person around him to to, to believe in it. And, and a, a one point further than that, I was gonna say, is you gotta be willing to, to also invest in that self, right? Mm-hmm. If you're so confident, put your money where your mouth is, right? He dropped $33,000 yeah. on a video shoot that he said well, it could, could've went down for a down payment to a Porsche, right? Like. Most people aren't confident enough to try, let alone invest in themselves to a point that makes them uncomfortable, right? So right. you have to be confident and you have to be willing to put your money behind behind you. Yeah, real quick, real quick to that point, right? What you uh, what you appreciate appreciates, 
And so like, if you consider yourself an investment, people say, I'm an asset, I'm the bag, secure yourself, all those fun cliches. If you believe that, right, then you should go all in on yourself because of the return that you believe that you're going to get, right? Always preach about the wealth triangle. And the first leg of the wealth triangle is uh, you making you money, right? Because you are the asset. And so it's like, if you believe in yourself, the first thing you got to do is go all in on yourself. You got to be willing to push all the chips in on the table for who you are and what you believe you can accomplish. Because if you're not willing to do that, if you don't believe in you, then how in the world can you ever convince anybody else to get on board if you don't even believe in you? Just, it's just as simple as it gets. How can you get somebody to believe in you if you don't believe in you, right? Yeah, you know, there's a big hindrance that I see with a lot of people. And I like to remind them now, I don't know what your faith is. I know what our faith is here on this podcast. But, you know, I tweeted it. I said, God didn't ask you to be perfect, just faithful, right? A lot of people run into this roadblock of feeling like they have to be perfect at whatever they're trying to do, not understanding that you become perfect along the way, right? Mm -hmm. Like as long as you are staying faithful to whatever it is that you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, then you are going to be successful. Like I've heard that so many times from people who are successful where they're like, dang, I just failed, 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 tried this, it didn't work, tried that, it didn't work. Eventually something popped off. Like even, um, well, I can't think of his name, the guy who created Pinterest, like mm-hmm. if you listen to his story, he had other failures before Pinterest popped off. But he knew he was like, no, 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 I meant to be in this tech space. I meant to create something that is going to change, you know, the way that the world looks at, you know, X, Y and Z. And so it took him a while to to, to get it. But he was like, I just kept pursuing it. Right. Yeah. All of my high level entrepreneur friends or clients, they all said the same thing. Like, yeah, I was just persistent. Even if they didn't keep trying multiple things, they just tried one thing, even with yay, like he had to be persistent in his craft. It didn't work the first time that he did it. He had to keep keep going through, keep fighting, keep trying, right? Keep making small pivots to make it work, you know? Even with us, like, we pivoted our brand a few times. We tried a few different things, right? And we're really catching fire now, thanks to y'all sharing this with your friends and family right now. <laughs> for share, okay? So you just got to keep at it. I think consistency at the end of the day wins. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? At the, <clears throat> we got to say, Carter? No, I was just not singing If at first you don't, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a fact, right? And it's just like, look, I always tell people this. Life is a stage play. <clears throat> now, when you get on that stage, unless it's a play that everybody already knows, right, which is they don't because it's your life, no one knows the lines but you, right? So when you, when you set out to do these things, don't put so much pressure on yourself like, oh, my gosh, like it didn't go according to plan. Nobody knows the plan but you. Right. So you should still have that confidence. No one knows any like unless you get on that stage and say, oh, my oh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I wasn't supposed to do that. No one's going to know that it didn't go according to plan. So have that confidence. Right. Pivot. Adjust. Like when we relaunched the Melanin Money brand. Right. The Melanin Millionaires Club. We just came out like that's what we were supposed to do. Like that's just what it was. That's what was supposed to happen. And nobody questioned it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so like now, granted, behind the scenes, there's a lot of stuff we had to do. Right. A whole, I mean, it was months that the people didn't see. They just saw the finished product. Right. But we, that's all we presented to the world. We didn't present to the world. Like, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying there isn't value in inviting people into that experience. Right. We should have documented that. That would have been dope to document the transition of pocket. We can tell, we can, we can, to my point earlier, we can tell the story. Right. And it still be valuable. Um, but nobody knows it. Right. So give yourself that grace you, you, the enemy of, of, of vision is sight. The problem is you can see so clearly exactly what it's supposed to look like that you forget that nobody else can see that. So you put all this pressure and stress on yourself like, oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not here yet. And it's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to feel like this. And people must see that I'm not where I'm. No, they don't know. Not to mention they got all bunch of stuff going on in their life. They don't even have the time to know, mm-hmm. right? So give yourself the grace, show up however you can show up at this in this season and just incrementally get better right no one knows if you come out confident that they all they're gonna think is that's how it was supposed to be anyway right so you know we always give y'all a call to action so here's your homework for this particular episode what we want we want y'all to do 
is we want you to write what is your vision statement for your life, right? Because Kanye obviously believed in who he was and that's why he got to where he got to. So I want you to write y'all's vision statement, right? Like, who are you? Where are you going? What is the life that you're going to live? How are you going to achieve it, right? Like, I want you to write that down. And I want somebody to share, like, if you want, I want somebody to share your vision statement with us. Email Melanin Money, I mean, podcast at melaninmoney.com. Mm, 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 mm. What's up? Mm, mm. What? Trying to pick up all my work. I got to get in the community. <laughs> I got to get in the club and drop that in the club. Okay. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. So to Jacqueline's point, you know, that's where we really hang out, right? It's a club, right? People hang out at the club. The difference is it's a Melanin Millionaire's Club. They never play yourself. So um, yeah, hop in the club. I mean, it's a dollar trial, right? Hop in the club, join us. We got classes every I just logged into the community and personally I have content scheduled into November. Mm-hmm. I got a video dropping every week until November. Okay. So get into the club, tap in with the community, ask Penny your financial questions, connect with the other people in the club, like and post your mission statement there. Thank you, Jacqueline, for correcting me. Right. Cause we want you in the club. I want to hang out with you. You know, so we want to have a have a drink with you in the club. <laughs> hey, Jacqueline, can we bring back some version of the wealthy wind down? I know we had to kind of pivot that originally when we first were getting started before we rebranded. Can we can we like re- bring back some version of that? The COVID mandate is over, so maybe we can like figure out some in person pop ups or something. But like, let's bring that back. Let's bring that back. I ain't welcome that. Wind down. We can, All right, guys. Back. Well, anything else y'all want to share with the good people before we uh? Before we tap out. Hey, um, I want everybody to remember, like, you have a Kanye in you. Literally. Mm. Everybody has a Kanye in them. And we like to give him a lot of smoke for his confidence and his attitude. But I talk to women a lot about our, our lack of confidence. Okay? Women, we we are less confident um, investors, right? And we're less confident as just our, our gender. And I want all women to stop being humble. Okay. I need you to pop your ish. All right. I need you to be on your yay. All right. Everybody has a yay. And I just want us to all expose that because the world needs it. Like that's the reality of it. The world needs to see that authentic you and somebody needs that. And you got to show up like that. And mm. straight like that. Straight like that. <laughs> hey, y'all. hey, we appreciate y'all for tapping in. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. And uh, you know how we do. We drop every single Wednesday. Check us out on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And leave us a review um, and let us know. Share it with your friends. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We changing the world. Melanin Money Style. That's good. Peace.